Welcome back guys. Uh, today we're at the range again and we're going to be taking a look at the Smith & Wesson M1917 45 ACP revolver. Now even though the uh, Smith & Wesson and the Colt M1917 came with the half moon clips and uh, on my pistol belt I have the half moon clips set up. The weird thing about the Smith & Wesson is that they're actually machined in the cylinder, so you don't require the half-moon clips. So you can fire the Smith & Wesson without the half-moon clips, but you cannot uh, fire the Colt without the half-moon clips. If you can see those little ledges that are machined into the cylinder, that prevents the shell from slipping through. So you can place the shell in there, and it won't fall through. But on the Colt, those are not there, so that's why you are required to use the half-moon clips. Uh, even though I've had this revolver for probably about three years, this will actually be the first time that I've shot it and uh, decided to share it with you guys. So let's load it up and uh, put a couple rounds through it and see how it goes. So these are going to be the first shots through the M1917. Uh, we'll do the first cylinder and see where we are accuracy wise. So first impression is in uh, single action, pulling back the hammer. The hammer's a little stiff, um, but I mean we're comparing that to modern guns or cowboy action guns that are meant to be thumbed fast. Um, comparatively, this is pretty stiff, but again, you're talking about a 1917 firearm. So um, I'll probably load up another cylinder and try it double action and uh, see how that goes. But uh, let's take a look at the target and see what happened. So this was the first shot, it was the second shot, third, fourth, fifth, and then the sixth one. I must have pulled the trigger and uh, got just a little bit out of the target. And we're about at 25 yards or so. Um, so first round's out of it, not too terrible, but we'll try double action and see what it does. So the first thing I noticed is on double action, the trigger pull is pretty darn stout. So if you're looking on double action, you've got all that, and then it finally breaks there. It's actually pretty heavy. I mean, that right there, I'm putting a good amount of pressure on that. It's not even moving, as opposed to on single action, you're already right there. All it takes is just a little squeeze, and we're good. Um, so on double action, definitely that trigger pull is going to affect my accuracy. Um, actually, let's take a look at how we did with that. So I think that was about the first or second shot there. I think there were, most of them got in there, but then I got another one out here. Um, I'm only counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven holes. I guess theoretically there could be a third one in there or there, although it doesn't really look like it. But I find it hard to believe that one missed completely. 
but definitely a big difference between double action and single action. Um, single action was a little bit more accurate because I, you don't have that heavy ass trigger pull. So we had one pretty bad trigger pull on the second shot. The first shot was right above the eye socket. Then we had the second. And then the rest, we got two in that hole. So besides that one pretty far outside, the rest were okay, okay enough. Now, trying to do uh, double pops there. Man, you can see one down in the pelvic region. Yeah, a couple more inside there. And there's one down there. But overall, man, that uh, trying to do double taps with that thing, that trigger pull is easily over 10 pounds. So, uh, actually, surprised I got a few in the center mass. But uh, those two, not too great. All right, final thoughts on the 1917. As I already mentioned, the single action is pretty nice. It's a, I mean, look how all it takes is that, and it fires pretty nice. The double action, on the other hand, that's easily over a 10-pound trigger pull. That's uh, pretty freaking beefy. So, the sights, not super great. Just a little notch there with a little little thin, a little higher up, but a little thin front blade sight. Um, obviously, quick load. If you had the half moon clips, you could drop those in relatively quick. But again, this actually does not require the half moon clips, as you see those little those little ledges in there. Um, also, uh, this is a this is a fun gun to shoot um i thought that i actually was having issues with it It was binding up after about the third or fourth shot and i thought maybe i broke the timing on it or that uh i was going to have some significant issues i couldn't tell what it was you know the first three rounds would cycle fine then they start get really really stiff then the fourth round you couldn't do anything and you'd have to knock out the cylinder like hard well it turns out all it was was this came loose this screws and all, all that was wrong was it was it needed to be tightened. Um, so I'm really glad I figured that out instead of burning to a gunsmith and looking like a complete dumbass. Um, but yeah, final opinions on the 1917 was that it's not something I'll take to the range and shoot all the time. But it's definitely a really fun gun just for a once in a while. Um, yeah. Thank you guys for tuning in and I hope you enjoyed yourself. And until next time, be good.